Thank you, Jessica. Would everyone please be seated? To those receiving degrees today, to their families and friends, to the faculty, staff, and students, on behalf of the university, I welcome you to the Spring 2017 Commencement Exercises in this 146th year of the university. Ms. Rebecca Oswalt, female member at large for the class of 2017, will now offer opening reflections. loved ones and soon-to-be graduates. You know, a rainy Virginia Tech graduation is still better than a sunny Virginia graduation, so we're doing well. <laughs> wow, so this is our last time all together in Lane Stadium as students. And you know, I think we all know that something is still missing here. So can I have everyone stand up? Here we are. We've arrived at this highly anticipated moment of graduation. And on the excitement of today, please don't forget to thank those who have gotten you to this moment. Your friends, family, mentors, and copy Wikipedia and Google. In the summer of 2013, we came to Blacksburg for orientation. We got our new hokey peas, we put them in those little Velcro things, um, and wore them proudly on our lanyards. We all got those shirts that said, what's a hokey? And we've all been conditioned to say, I am. But really, why do we ask, what's a hokey? I mean, sure, maybe we need to clarify that we're not just turkeys. But really, why do we ask? It's kind of funny. You know, a hokey can be so many different things. And that's why we do have to ask. And I think that's the beauty of it. I can guarantee that we're not all going to agree on everything. We've all had infinitely different experiences. Except we've probably all experienced getting a parking ticket on campus. There are things that unify us. But we've each had our own unique path that's taken us to this moment. So what is a Hokie? A Hokie is someone who reaches for excellence into the late hours of the night at Torg Bridge. Yeah. Oh yeah, we've all been there. <laughs> a Hokie is someone who finds a Hokie pee and goes without rest until it's returned. A Hokie is someone who passionately embodies oop prosum on their Saturday morning at the big event. Being a Hokie is being a part of something greater than ourselves. Our purpose, our gifts, and our time are not really about us. Each and every one of us has a reason why we're here at graduation. We're fueled by a purpose higher than ourselves. So today we're all receiving Virginia Tech diplomas, but those diplomas mean something different to each of us. They do not just represent the classes that you've taken during your time here to get your degree, but they also represent all of these experiences that you've had here at Virginia Tech. So what brought you here to this seat right now? Where will you go after you leave this seat? What is a Hokie to you? Whatever it may be, 
May it always be rooted in your higher purpose. Congratulations, class of 2017, and welcome to your graduation. Thank you, Rebecca. We are pleased to have with us today representatives from Virginia Tech's Board of Visitors. Board members are appointed by the governor, and Virginia Tech is fortunate to have a long history of appointees who bring a deep and genuine commitment to their voluntary service to the university. I would like each of them to ask each of them to stand as I call their names. Rector of the Board, Mr. Jim Chapman. Vice Rector, Mr. Dennis Tracy. Mr. Chris Peterson, Mr. De M M sorry, Ms. Deborah Petrine, Mr. Michael Quillen, Mr. Wayne Robinson, Dr. Thomas Ryan, and Mr. Steve Sturgis. We are also pleased to welcome Dr. Montessera Boss, faculty representative to the board, Mr. Alex Parrish, staff representative, Ms. Tara Reel, our graduate student representative, and Mr. Gabriel Cohen, our undergraduate student representative. Thank you for your service. Now I'd like to recognize others who have made this special day possible. Would the parents of all the graduates please stand and be recognized? I'd also like to recognize the grandparents of graduates who are here with us today. Would you please stand? And finally, would all the aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, and other family members of the graduates who are here today please stand? Thank you. You may be seated. And now, Mr. Mark Lawrence, President-Elect of the Virginia Tech Alumni Association Board, will bring greetings on behalf of our alumni. Mr. Lawrence is Vice President for Governmental and External Affairs at Carilion Clinic, one of our key partners. He leads the health system's public policy program, advocating for health care issues with members of Congress and the Virginia General Assembly, broadening the base of community support for the clinic. Mark. Please come and speak to our graduates. Good morning, Hokie graduates, families, and friends. Thank you, President Sands, for that very kind introduction. I'm honored to be here to join you in today's celebration. Graduates, this is your special day. You're joining the Hokie alumni family. Welcome and congratulations. And to my nephew, Patrick, a shout out to you, one of your classmates, way to go. We're very proud of you. As graduates of Virginia Tech, you are now part of a group of more than 250,000 people, not just in the United States, but around the world. Our co community is large, but we share a common bond that is more than just our traditions here in Lane Stadium on this beautiful fall day. <laughs> Memories of winters trudging across the drill field or catching up with friends at Tots. It's our commitment to service to each other and to the global community that unites us. As Hokies, we live ut prosum every day. It's more than a motto, it's who we are. We serve others, we help each other, and we fight for what's right and to make a difference. As you enter the world upon graduation, 
you will face big opportunities and at times difficult challenges. Savor each moment and rely on members of the Hokie Nation for support. Your Hokie family will be there. Remember that. The Hokie Nation is more than a hashtag or a slogan on a t-shirt. It's the living embodiment of the spirit inside each and every one of you. As you celebrate your graduation, I hope that you will slow down long enough to really enjoy the moment. And please pause and say thank you to your parents, families, and others who helped you along the way. Your studies and hard work have prepared your minds for the journey that awaits you. And your experiences, like the big event, Relay for Life, or the Run for Remembrance, have shaped your hearts for service to your communities and to each other. On behalf of the board of the Virginia Tech Alumni Association, we are so pleased to have you as the university's newest alumni and are so proud of what you've accomplished. We're also depending on you. Be an ambassador for the university that has supported you. Visit campus often. Mentor other Hokies. Volunteer with your local alumni chapter. And if there isn't one where you are, start one. Share what makes our community so special with others and please give back when you can. Becoming an alum is not the end of your journey with Virginia Tech. Rather, it's a milestone. We can't wait to see what you do and where you go. Congratulations and best of luck to each of you. Go Hokies. Thank you, Mark. Now I'm pleased to introduce Mr. Patrick Finn, president of the class of 2017. President Sands, distinguished guests, families, faculty, and the graduating class of 2017. The moment is finally here. It sure went by faster than we could have imagined. But here we are, all together, all Hokies. We did it. Before I continue, I want to give a special recognition to my mom and dad who are here today. They are both Virginia Tech graduates, and I owe them both the world for everything. I don't know what I did to deserve such great influences on my life. Thanks, Mom and Dad, and thanks to all the moms and dads, grandparents, siblings, friends, and family out there today. Today, we graduate from the greatest university that this country has to offer. Virginia Tech simply has it all. We have a beautiful campus, that grows and changes without ever really changing. We have community that we can invest in and celebrate. We have a world-class education provided by Virginia Tech, and most importantly, we have learned so much about ourselves, not only in the classroom, but from all the people around us. The Virginia Tech experience, it's unlike any other place on the planet. Where else can you participate in the world's largest collegiate relay for life? Where else can you do community service projects with 8,000 other Hokies in the big event? Where else can you get a great leg exercise while dancing to your favorite rock and roll song? Where else can you get the best dining hall food in the nation? <laughs> and where else can you go on the road and beat the Ohio State University? <laughs> or play a football game at a NASCAR track? <laughs> there are so many events and moments we have been fortunate enough to embrace and enjoy during our time in Blacksburg. Whether it was a Virginia Tech tradition, like getting or touching the homecoming game ball, or getting your ring at ring dance, or hiking McAfee's Knob, Dragon's Tooth, or the Cascades. 
from Sharky's Happy Hour to Todd's Karaoke Tuesday. <laughs> there are so many memories, even if bots almost waited until graduation to finally open. And how could I forget to mention the two main catalysts of Hokie Spirit, football and basketball success. The 2016 football season, where we can never forget that Arkansas blew a 24-point lead in the Belk Bowl. And on the hardwood, where Coach Buzz led the Hokies back to the big dance, something that all of Hokie Nation should be proud of. What I cherish most about Virginia Tech is the relationships that I have formed because of this loving, caring community. We are so strong and so tight-knit. A lot of our community feel can be attributed to a man who has probably had an impact on many of us here today in Lane Stadium. A man named Coach Frank Beamer. <laughs> Coach Beamer says it best about Lane Stadium. During the week, people go their own way. They have their own interests, such as music, engineering, the military, math, science. Students have different majors and different pursuits in life. But on Saturdays, we're all one. We all come together in Lane Stadium, rooting for the same thing. Here we are on graduation day, together in Lane Stadium, pursuing our goal of graduating from Virginia Tech. That's a pretty special thing. Embrace that feeling. Embrace the relationships you have built here. Embrace our incredible community. We've laughed, we've cried, and we've had an amazing college experience. But now, we're ready to turn the page and experience something new. We each are going to separate ways. Whether you're up in Nova, Richmond, Charlotte, New York, California, China, or beyond, remember to carry your Hokie pride with you wherever you go. So let it be. Congratulations, class of 2017. Let's go out there and invent the future. Thank you, Patrick. Now we invite everyone to stand and join Ms. Jessica Vance in singing our alma mater.
Thank you, Jessica. Today, we're proud to welcome many distinguished alumni back to campus, including our next speaker, Dr. Regina Dugan, received her bachelor's and master's degrees in engineering from Virginia Tech and a PhD from Caltech. She went on to lead the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, also known as DARPA, and the Advanced Technology and Projects Laboratory at Google. She is currently Vice President of Engineering at Facebook and runs the company's product development and research team known as Building 8, a place where world-class experts come together to create an environment of breakthrough innovation. We enjoyed having her on campus last year as the first speaker in our Beyond Boundaries presidential lecture series. She reminded us of the great capability, with great capability comes great responsibility. Regina exemplifies the hokey spirit of experiential learning, innovation, and a pursuit of knowledge that can make the world a better place. Please welcome Dr. Regina Dugan. Well, graduates, I have four words for you today. Buckle the hell up. Because starting now, right here, it's your turn. Your chance to introduce the world to what does not yet exist. It's why I came to Virginia Tech why I walked across the drill field for eight o'clock class, freezing in the rain and mud in duck boots, because that was before walkways. Why I ran from McBride to the vet school, who thought you could do that in 10 minutes? It's why I spent hours in CAD labs in Randolph Hall, learn to weld and cast and machine, eventually to cross this stage, all of it to get the chance to earn the privilege to make something new. The same chance that you now have. What I discovered here is that engineering, well, it's like art. And that artists and engineers, well, they are more the same than they are different. Artists imagine new things. They see something new, believe in it, create it. That's what engineers do, too. Imagine something new, believe in it, build it. They each believe in something and then make it so, in that order. I am often asked what I think the future will look like in 20 years. Actually, I have no idea. Embedded in that question is the sense that the future is some inevitability and that we are passive participants idly watching it unfold. But the future is not that. The future is what we choose to make. And we choose to make what we believe in. In this sense, we are all architects and engineers, artists and creators, inventors of the future. This is one of the hardest things we do because making something new requires courage, bravery, accepting that you might fail. Inevitably, we have to buckle up and decide, decide to try. Because believing in something, even in the face of potential failure, it's difficult. It's difficult and it's woven into the fabric of all great achievements. Sometimes the courage required is quite public for all to see. There are parades. Sometimes it is a quiet inflection point that few see 
there are no parades, and the world is forever changed. In 1969, we landed on the moon. Scientists and engineers were heroes. They built rockets and space capsules. It was a triumph of technical tenacity and of overcoming failure, much failure along the way. In that same year, something else happened, arguably even more important. On October 29, 1969, the first packet-switched message was sent over the ARPANET from UCLA to SRI. The first two letters of the word login, an L and an O, were all that got through. And then a buffer overflow crashed the system. From that humble beginning, the internet became a worldwide force, a reflection of the human race, a vast networked mirror of who we are and what we will become. We built that. Despite the odds, parade or not, someone decided to take the chance, chose to try, and in so doing, introduce the world to what did not yet exist. What you've probably already discovered is that the believing in is oftentimes harder than the making of. In 2007, the Virginia Tech Victor Tango team placed third in the DARPA Urban Challenge, an autonomous vehicle challenge to navigate an urban environment for 60 miles in less than six hours. Easy to think that's not so difficult now. But in 2007, it seemed impossible. It wasn't at all an inevitable future unfolding in front of us. The Virginia Tech team beat 80 other teams. Perhaps more importantly, they were a symbol of the power of making the kind of making that lifts us up, feeds the human spirit. Because halfway through the preparation for the competition, the shootings happened on campus. They had every reason to stop, but they did not. Instead, their efforts became a tribute to those who had fallen. An illustration of the Virginia Tech engineering philosophy, hands-on, minds-on. They found the courage to try to make something real in honor of those who were lost. We want to make things. We want to make things with our hands. We crave it. It sparks something in us feeds our desire to create, heals our souls. It's why we root for the underdog, because we are unified by an understanding of how vulnerable it feels to risk failure. And we know intuitively that it is authentic and human and scary to dare and dream and do. So buckle the hell up. Autonomous vehicle, packet switch network, or spaceship to the moon, whatever you dare to dream, do. And that brings me to the queen of daring and dreaming and doing, Sheryl Sandberg. My friend and colleague, the chief operating officer of Facebook, a starter of revolutions, a financial wizard who served as chief of staff in the United States Treasury before her 30th birthday, best-selling author of not one, but two books, Founder of not one, but two organizations, Lean In and now Option B. A beating heart of Silicon Valley and beyond, 
an icon to women, a North Star for those navigating the unknown and incredible depths of loss, and who emerge even stronger than before. Over the past year, I've had the rare privilege of sitting five feet from Cheryl. And so I know from experience how inspiring it is to hear her in person. Ladies and gentlemen, Cheryl Sandberg. President Sands, esteemed faculty, proud parents, devoted friends, wet siblings, congratulations to all of you. But most importantly, congratulations to the Virginia Tech class of 2017. I am honored to be with you. And this San Francisco summer day feels just like home, just like it does with anything with tech in its name. I'm so delighted to be here with my friend, Regina Dugan. As you just heard, Regina used to run DARPA for real. And now she's developing breakthrough technologies at Facebook. In hokey terms, she's our Bruce Smith. And she's just one of so many alums doing amazing things around the world. Today, class of 2017, you join them. And I'm thrilled for you. And thrilled for all of the people who are here supporting you. The people who have pushed you, dried your tears and laughed with you from your very first day to this day. Let's show them all of our thanks. Commencement speeches can be pretty one-sided. The speaker, that's me, imparts her hard-earned wisdom, or at least tries to. The graduates, that's you. You sit in the rain today and listen like the thoughtful people you are. Then you hurl your caps in the air, hug your friends, let your parents take lots of pictures of you, post them on Instagram, just one idea, and head off into your amazing lives, maybe swinging by Sharkies for one last plate of wings before you go. Today is going to be a little bit different because I'm not going to talk about something I know and you don't. I want to talk about something the Virginia Tech community knows all too well. Today, I want to talk about resilience. This university is known for so many things. Your kindness and decency, your academic excellence, your deeply felt school spirit. I spend a lot of time at colleges. Yes, for work, but also because I might want to relive my 20s just a little. Few people talk about their school the way Hokies talk about Virginia Tech. There is so much pride and unity here, such a deep sense of identity. And I'm gonna prove it by asking you one simple question. What's a hokey? That's it. What you might not realize is that that hokey spirit has made all of you more resilient. I've spent the last two years studying resilience because something happened in my life that demanded more of it than I ever would have thought possible. Two years and 11 days ago, I lost my husband, Dave, suddenly and unexpectedly. Sometimes I still have a hard time saying the words because I can't quite believe it actually happened. I woke up on what I thought would be a totally normal day, and my world just changed forever. I know, important day, it's raining, and I'm up here talking about death. But I promise you there's a reason, and even one that's not even sad. Because what I've learned since losing Dave 
has fundamentally changed how I view this world and how I live in it. And I want to share it with you on this day because I think it's going to help you lead happier, healthier, and more joyful lives. And you deserve all of that. Each of you walked a very unique path to reach this day. Some of you faced real trauma. All of you faced challenges. Disappointment, heartache, loss, illness, all of these are so personal when they strike, but they're also so universal. And then there are the shared losses. The Virginia Tech community knows this. You've stopped for a quiet moment by the 32 hokey stones on the drill field, as I did with President Sands just this morning. You've joined your friends for the run in remembrance. You know that life can turn in an instant. And you know what it means to come together, to pull together, to grieve together, but ultimately to overcome together. After Dave died, I did something I've done at other hard times in my life. I hit the books. With my friend Adam Grant, a psychologist who studies how we find meaning in our lives, I dove into the research on resilience and recovery. The most important thing I learned is that we are not born with a certain amount of resilience. It is a muscle, and that means we can build it. We build resilience into ourselves. We build resilience into the people we love. And we build it together as a community. That's called collective resilience. It's an incredibly powerful force, and it's one that our country and our world need a lot more of right about now. It is in our relationships with each other that we find our will to live, our capacity to love, and our ability to bring change into this world. Class of 2017, you are particularly suited to the task of building collective resilience because you are graduating from Virginia Tech. Communities like this don't just happen. They are formed and strengthened by people coming together in very specific ways. You've been part of that here, whether you knew it or not. As you go off and become leaders, and yes, you will lead, you are destined to lead. You can make the communities you join and the communities you form stronger. Here's where you start. You can build collective resilience through shared experiences. You've had lots of those. Jumping to enter Sandman. I saw that this morning. It's incredible. And during the walk across the drill field in the winter, kind of like Jon Snow at the wall. <laughs> finding new loves and then new new loves. Being there for each other through tri triumph and through disappointment. Every class, every meal, every all-nighter has added another strand to a vast web that connects you to each other and to Hokies everywhere. These ties do more than connect, they support. Nearly 30 years ago, a very talented young man made it from a very underprivileged background all the way to college, but then he didn't finish. And when he dropped out, he said, if only I had my posse with me, I would have graduated. That insight led an amazing woman named Deborah Bial to create the Posse Foundation, which recruits high potential students in teams of 10 to go from the same city to the same college. Posse kids have a 90% graduation rate from some of the best schools in the country. We all need our posses especially when life puts the obstacles in our path. 
Out there in the world, when you leave Virginia Tech, you're going to have to build your own posse. And sometimes, that's going to mean asking for help. This was never easy for me. Before Dave died, I tried to bother people as little as possible. And yes, bothering people is what I thought it was. But then my life changed, and I needed my friends and family and colleagues more than I ever could have thought I would. My mom, who along with my dad is here with me today, just like yours are here with you, stayed with me for the very first month, literally holding me as I cried myself to sleep. I had never felt weaker, but I learned that it takes strength to rely on others. There are times to lean in, and there are times to lean on. Building a posse also means acknowledging our friends' challenges. Before I lost Dave, if a friend was going through something hard, I would usually say I'm sorry once, and then I wouldn't bring it up again because I didn't want to remind them of their pain. Losing my husband taught me how absurd that was. You can't remind me I lost Dave. But like I had done with others, when people failed to mention it, it felt like there was a big old elephant following me around everywhere I went. It's not only death that ushers in the elephant. You want to completely silence a room? Say you have cancer, that your father went to jail, that you lost your job. We retreat into silence just when we need each other the most. Now, not everyone's going to want to talk about everything all the time, but saying to a friend, I know you're suffering, and I am here with you, can kick a very ugly elephant out of any room. If you're in someone's posse, don't just offer to help in a generic way. Before I lost Dave, when a friend was in need, I would say, is there anything I can do? And I meant it kindly. The problem is that question kind of shifts the burden to the person in need. And when people asked me, I didn't know how to answer the question. Can you make Father's Day go away? Here's a different approach. When my friend Dan Levy's son was sick in the hospital, a friend texted him and said, what do you not want on a burger? Another friend texted from the lobby and said, I'm in the lobby of the hospital for a hug for the next hour, whether you come down or not. You don't have to do something huge. You don't have to wait for someone to tell you exactly what they need. And you do not have to be someone's best friend from the first grade to show up. If you are there for your friends and let them be there for you, if you laugh together until your sides ache, if you hold each other as you cry, and maybe even bring them a burger with the wrong toppings before they ask. That won't just make you more resilient. It'll help you lead a deeper and more meaningful life. We also build collective resilience through shared narratives. That might sound light. How important can a story be? But stories are vital. They're how we explain our past, and they're how we set expectations for our future and they help us build the common understanding that creates a community in the first place. Every time your friends tell their favorite tales, like, I don't know, when Tech beat UVA in double overtime, you strengthen your bonds to each other. Shared narratives are critical for fighting injustice and creating social change. A few years ago, we started LeanIn.org to help work towards gender equality, helping women and men form lean-in circles, small groups that support each other's ambitions. There are now more than 33,000 circles in 150 countries, but it wasn't until I lost Dave that I understood why circles are thriving. It's because they build collective resilience. Not long ago, I was in Beijing, and I had a chance to meet with women from lean-in circles across China. Like in a lot of places, it's not always easy to be a woman in China. 
If you're unmarried past age 27, you're called Sheng Nu, a leftover woman. And I thought the word widow was bad. The stigma that comes from being a leftover woman can be intense. One woman, a 36-year-old economics professor, was rejected by 15 men because, wait for it, she was too educated. After that, her father forbade her younger sister from going to graduate school. But more than 80,000 women have come together in lean-in circles to create a new narrative. One circle created a play, The Leftover Monologues, which celebrates being left over and tackles the topics too often unspoken, like sexual harassment, date rape, and homophobia. The world told them what their story should be, and they said, actually, we're writing a different story for ourselves. We are not left over. We are strong, and we will write our story together. <laughs> Building collective resilience also means trying to understand how the world looks to those who have experienced it differently. Because they're a different race, come from a different country, have an economic background unlike yours. We each have our own story, but we can write new ones together. And that means seeing the values in each other's points of view and looking for common ground. Anyone here a little bit anxious about your future? Not sure where the future is taking you? Sometimes me too. And you know what helps you combat that fear? A very big idea captured in a very tiny word, hope. There are many kinds of hope. There's the hope that she wouldn't swipe left. Sorry. There's the hope that as you sit here, your stuff will magically pack itself. Sorry. There's the hope that it would stop raining. Double sorry. But my favorite kind of hope is called grounded hope. The understanding that if you take action, you can make things better. We normally think of hope as something that's held in individual people. But hope, like resilience, is something we grow and nurture together. Just two days ago, I visited Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston. We all know about the shooting that took place there just two years ago, claiming the lives of a pastor and eight worshipers. What happened afterwards was extraordinary. Instead of being consumed by hatred, the community came together to stand against racism and violence. As a local pastor, Jermaine Watkins, beautifully put it, to hatred, we say, no way, not today. To division, we say, no way, not today. And to loss of hope, we say, no way, not today. That was the theme of maybe the most touching Facebook post I've ever read. And let's face it, I've read a lot of Facebook posts. This one was by Antoine Liris, a journalist in Paris whose wife, Helene, was killed in the 2015 Paris attacks. Two days later, two days, he wrote an open letter to his wife, Killers. He said, on Friday night, you stole the life of an exceptional being the love of my life, the mother of my son. But you will not have my hate. My 17-month-old son will play as we do every day. And all his life, this little boy will defy you by being happy and free. Because you will not have his hate either.
Strength like, like that makes all of us who see it stronger. Hope like that makes all of us more hopeful. That's how collective resilience works. We lift each other up. This might seem very intuitive to you Hokies because these qualities of collective resilience, shared experiences, shared narratives, and shared hope shine forth from every corner of this university. You are a testament to courage, faith, and love. And that's been true not just for these past 10 years, but for over a century before then. This university means a lot to you graduates, but it also means a lot to America and to the world. So many of us look to you as an example of how to stay strong and brave and true. This is your legacy class of 2017. You will carry it with you, that capacity for finding strength in yourselves and building strength in the people around you. Virginia Tech has given you a purpose reflected in your motto, that I may serve. An important way you can serve and lead is by helping build resilience in the world. We have a responsibility to help families and communities become more resilient because none of us get through anything alone. We get through it together. As you leave this beautiful campus and set out into the world, build resilience in yourselves. When tragedy or disappointment strike, know that deep inside you, you have the ability to get through anything. I promise you do. As the saying goes, we are more vulnerable than we ever thought, but we are stronger than we ever imagined. <laughs> Build resilient organizations. Speak up when you see injustice. Lend your time and your passion to the causes that matter. My favorite poster at Facebook reads, Nothing at Facebook is something else's problem. When you see something that's broken and there is a lot that is broken out there, go fix it. Your motto demands that you do. Build resilient communities. Virginia Tech founded the Global Forum on Resilience four years ago, and it's doing outstanding work in this field. Be there for your friends and family. And I mean in person not just in a message with a heart emoji, even though those are pretty great too. Be there for your neighbors. It's a divided time in our country, and we need you to help us heal. Lift each other up and celebrate each and every moment of joy, because one of the most important ways you can build resilience is by cultivating gratitude. Two years ago, if someone had told me that I would lose the love of my life and become more grateful, I would have never believed them. But that's what happened. Because today, I am more grateful now than I ever was before. For my family and especially my children, for my friends, for my work, for life itself. A few months ago, my cousin Laura turned 50. Graduates, you may not appreciate that turning 50 happens soon and feels old, but your parents do. I called her that morning and I said, happy birthday, Laura. But I'm also calling to say, in case you woke up with that, oh my God, I'm 50 thing, don't do that. This is the year Dave doesn't turn 50. Either we get older or we don't. No more jokes about growing old. Every year, every moment, even in the pouring rain, is an absolute gift.
You don't have to wait for special occasions like graduation to feel and show your gratitude to your family, your friends, your professors, your baristas, everyone. Counting your blessings increases them. People who take the time to focus on the things they're grateful for are happier and healthier. My New Year's resolution last year was to write down three moments of joy before I went to bed each night. This very simple thing has changed my life because I realized I used to go to bed every night thinking about what I did wrong and what I was going to do wrong the next day. Now I go to sleep thinking of what went right. And when those moments of joy happen throughout the day, I notice them more because I know they'll make the notebook. Try it. Start tonight on this day full of happy memories, but maybe before you hit Big Al's. <laughs> Graduates, on the path before you, you will have good days and you will have hard days. Go through all of them together. Seek shared experiences with all kinds of people. Write shared narratives that create the world you want to live in. Build shared hope in the communities you join and the communities you form. And above all, find gratitude for the gift of life itself and the opportunities it provides for meaning, for joy, and for love. Tonight, when I write down my three moments of joy, I will write about this, about the hope and the amazing resilience of this community. And maybe you'll write that I finally stopped talking. <laughs> you have the whole world in front of you. I cannot wait to see what you do with it. Congratulations and go Hokies! Cheryl and Regina, we may be wet, but thank you for giving us a commencement we will never forget. Thank you. Thank you. Members of class of 2017, I hope you remember this unique opportunity to hear from not one, but two remarkable individuals who are leading innovative change in a rapidly evolving world you are about to enter as graduates. And now Mr. Charles Flager, Vice President for Advancement, will present our Alumni Distinguished Service Awards. It is my pleasure to announce this year's Alumni Distinguished Service Award recipients. These awards are presented annually to alumni who exhibit outstanding service to the university and to the Alumni Association. It is my great honor to acknowledge two individuals who are recipients of these awards for 2017. Our first honoree is Ms. Nancy Moga. Nancy, would you please come forward? Nancy is a lifelong teacher, a school administrator, and a leader in, edu in the education community. She currently serves as principal of Callaghan Elementary School in Allegheny County and has been honored as Virginia's National Distinguished Principal. Her service to Virginia Tech includes Hokies for Higher Education, the Alumni Association Board, the Board of the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences, the Women in Leadership and Philanthropy Council, and Chair of the Virginia 4-H Foundation Board. We honor her for her dedication to the university and her commitment to quality education. Congratulations. Our second honoree is Mr. Charles Wood. Charlie, will you please come forward? <laughs> 
Since he retired from an extensive executive career with Southern States Cooperative, Charlie has been dedicated to Virginia Tech and to improving his community. He helped found a nonprofit organization to assist unemployed Richmond, Virginia residents. His work has helped find jobs for more than 2,000 individuals and led to Richmond Regional Chamber of Commerce naming him Henrico County Leader of the Year. His commitment to Virginia Tech includes serving as president of the Richmond Alumni Chapter, an involvement in Hokies for Higher Education, the Leadership Council for the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, and the Virginia Tech Athletics Hokie Club. We honor him for his service to the university and his community. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to announce the University Distinguished Achievement Award recipient. This award honors nationally significant achievement of enduring benefit to society. We honor these award recipients during commencement because they exemplify the university motto with prosum that I may serve. They're an example to us all, demonstrating how individual success can serve the broader good. Now I will ask the rector of our Board of Visitors, Mr. James Chapman, to join me for the presentation. One second, we'll get it together here. Let's go. All right, my turn. I think so. On behalf of the Board of Visitors, it is my pleasure to present our 2017 University Distinguished Achievement Award to Letitia A. Long. And I would ask Ms. Long to please come up and join us. Ms. Long, a Virginia Tech engineering graduate, began her career as an intern in the Navy. She rose in the ranks to become Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence, Deputy Director of the Defense Intelligence Agency, and Director of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, becoming the first woman to lead a major U.S. intelligence agency. Her numerous awards include the Presidential Rank Award of Distinguished Executive, two Department of Defense Medals for Distinguished Service, and three National Intelligence Distinguished Service Medals. She is also the recipient of many international honors, including Norway's Medal of Merit, Poland's Commander's Cross, and the rank of Chevalier in the National Order of the Legion of Honor of France. She currently sits on the boards of Raytheon, EarthCast, Noblis, D-Wave Government Systems, and the U.S. Geospatial Intelligence Foundation. She's chairman of the board of the Intelligence and National Security Alliance, and an executive in residence with the Brookings Education, Executive Education. At Virginia Tech, she has served on the board of the School of Public and International Affairs within the College of Architecture and Urban Studies and the board of the Ted and Karen Hume Center for National Security and Technology. 
please join me in congratulating Mrs. Long for her outstanding achievements. Thank you, Jim. And now it's my great honor to, to announce the William H. Ruffner Medal recipient. The Ruffner Medal recognizes and honors those individuals whose great contributions and distinguished service to Virginia Tech rise above all others. It is the most prestigious honor our university confers. Our 2017 honoree is Mr. John R. Lawson II. Mr. Lawson, would you please come forward? John Lawson graduated from Virginia Tech with a degree in geophysics. Geophysicists learn about the Earth and how it works, and in Mr. Lawson's case, he also learned how to build things. He is currently president and CEO of W.M. Jordan Company, ranked among the country's top contractors, and he's a former member of the Associated General Contractors of Virginia. In 2002, Mr. Lawson began an eight-year term on the Virginia Tech Board of Visitors serving as rector for his final two years. To say he left his mark on the university is an understatement. He is a co-founder of the Myers Lawson School of Construction. And if you like Hokey Stone, Mr. Lawson was a driving force behind the adoption of our campus design guidelines that promote the use of Hokey Stone and collegiate Gothic architecture. His expertise contributed to our beautiful Moss Arts Center and the West Side expansion we enjoy here in Lane Stadium. As a dedicated alumnus, he has been an advocate of Hokies for higher education and a member of the boards of the Virginia Tech Foundation and the Corporate Research Center. He was the co-chair of the Campaign for Virginia Tech that concluded in 2011 after raising more than $1.1 billion. He is part of the Hokey family that includes his father, Robert, who was a member of the class of 1949, and his son, Taylor, a member of the class of 2018. Along with his wife, Paige, he is a charter member of the President's Circle within the Uprosum Society, a group of our most generous supporters. His community involvement includes service on the boards of the Children's Hospital, of the King's Daughters, and the Campton Roads Community Foundation. He and Paige are life, longtime supporters of the Achievable Dream Initiative, and we, I know we have some of those students here, which operates three schools for academically at-risk students. He is a recipient of the Civic Darden Award for Regional Leadership and the Distinguished Citizen Award from the Peninsula Chamber of Commerce. It is an honor to present the Ruffner Medal to John Lawson in recognition of his contributions to the university and his dedication to our spirit of service. I now call upon the University Provost, Dr. Thanasis Rakakis, to assist with the conferral of degrees. Oh, okay. I have my wet script here. All right. Are we wet yet or what? All right, good. So you can't get any wetter. So there you go. So I hope you all realize that uh, we reached another Beyond Boundaries milestone a few minutes ago. You know how the past four years you struggled between the beautiful lectures at the front and Facebook on your computer? Well, guess what? You got two beautiful lectures and they were from Facebook. <laughs> there you go. And if you're wondering about how good... <laughs> and if you're wondering about how good John Lawson is with construction, take a look at the field. How well it's draining, hey? There's no flooding around. <laughs> so there you go. Excellence all the way. <laughs> all right. 
Now, in today's ceremony, we will award 38 associate degrees, approximately 4,767 baccalaureate degrees, and 118 Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degrees. In case you didn't get it, those are the folks down there, yeah? <laughs> Virginia Tech also holds a full commencement for those eligible to participate upon their completion of summer or fall sessions. The degree candidates today include students who have completed requirements during the winter and the spring terms of 2017. Each college of the university will provide an opportunity for parents and guests to see their candidates for associate and bachelor's degrees receive their diplomas. In ceremonies held yesterday, our graduate degrees were awarded, and I will ask our Vice President and Dean for Graduate Education, Dr. Cannon DuPont, to tell us about those ceremonies. Yesterday, we did hold our graduate commencement ceremony in a very hot but dry coliseum. And on Sunday, we will hold our commencement ceremony in the National Capital Region. Altogether, approximately 300 Doctor of Philosophy and Doctor of Education degrees will be conferred. 211 of them were hooded and presented their diplomas uh, yesterday. We are also conferring a total of 38 education specialists, 108 grad certificates, and over 1,000 master's degrees. Please join me in a round of applause for these, these students, these graduates. Thank you, Dr. DePaul. This evening, the Virginia, Maryland Regional College of Veterinary Medicine will hood and present diplomas to 118 students of its 34th class. At, there you go. At this time, Dr. Cyril Clark, Dean of the College, will present candidates for Doctor of Veterinary Medicine for the official conferral of those degrees. Will representative candidates for the Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree please rise. Mr. President, I have the honor to present my colleagues, the candidates for the Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree in the College of Veterinary Medicine. With the power vested in me by the Board of Visitors and the Commonwealth of Virginia, and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you the Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degrees to which you are entitled with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. All right, no dampening your spirits, that's very good. And since you're in veterinary medicine, you'll be out in the field working, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see you used to rain and all that good stuff. Good job. All right, all right. I would now like to acknowledge those candidates for bachelor's degrees who will graduate with distinction and who can be identified by the white sashes. Will those honorable graduates please rise to be recognized? Thank you. Please be seated. The deans will now present their candidates for undergraduate degrees. Dean Alan Grant will present the candidates for associate and bachelor's degrees in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Will all candidates for associate and bachelor's degrees in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences please rise. President Sands, I have the honor to present the candidates for associate and bachelor's degrees in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Please be seated. Next, for the last time and after 11 years of amazing service to Virginia Tech, Jean Jack Davis will present the candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Architecture and Urban Studies. Please join me in thanking Jack 
for 11 years of great services, Dean. Has to be recorded. <laughs> Will all extraordinary candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Architecture and Urban Studies please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present my colleagues the candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Architecture and Urban Studies. Thank you, Jack. Dean Robert Sumicrust. There you go. We'll present the candidates for bachelor degrees in the Pampling College of Business. Will all candidates for bachelor's degrees from the Pamplin College of Business please rise? <laughs> President Sands, I have the honor to present to you candidates for bachelor's degrees from the Pamplin College of Business. Now, for a small group, uh, Dean John Taylor will present the candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Engineering. Will all the candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Engineering please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present the candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Engineering. Thank you. Dean Rosemary Blisner will present the candidates for bachelor degrees in the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences. Will the candidates for bachelor's degree in the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences please rise? <laughs> President Sands, I have the honor of presenting the candidates for bachelor's degree in the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences. Congratulations. Now, Dean Sally Wharton will present the candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Science. Will all candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Science please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present the candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Science. So here we are in Lane Stadium, about to watch hundreds of talented graduates take the field of life and perform in amazing ways that we cannot even imagine. We tend to get very excited here at Lane Stadium when we're about to witness such extraordinary performances. Oh my goodness. Did you? You didn't. No, I didn't. The script did. Thank you. Now. We want to make sure that everybody stays on the toes, so we hid a college to make sure somebody caught it. I'm glad to report that our president caught it. Representing the number one ranked College of Natural Resources and the Environment, Dean Winnestorfer. Will all candidates for the bachelor's degrees in the number one ranked College of Natural Resources in the United States Please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present the bachelor's, the candidates for the bachelor's degrees in the College of Natural Resources and Environment. Please be seated. All right. So going back to this idea before we forgot, we didn't forget the college. We just, we just wanted to... We just wanted to make it exciting, all right? So, we tend to get very excited here at Lane Stadium when we're about to witness such extraordinary performances. 
by young people, and we have a unique, very unique, hockey way of letting our performance know how excited we are. So for the last time, graduates, parents, grandparents, siblings, please stand up and join me for a unique hockey tradition. I can't hear you. There you go. Mr. President, I present to you the wonderful class of 2017. Hey, Andy, I haven't graduated you yet. Okay, this is going to be a little bit anticlimactic, but here we go. With the power vested in me by the Board of Visitors and the Commonwealth of Virginia, and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you the associate and bachelor's degrees to which you're entitled, with all rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. You may now signify your new status by moving your tassel from the right side of the mortarboard to the left and, and turning your class ring. I congratulate each of you and ask the audience to once again recognize your achievement with some more applause. Now, as we conclude our 2017 Spring Commencement Program, I want to say a special word of thanks to conductor Jonathan Caldwell and the Wind Ensemble, to Ms. Jessica Vance for her performance today as well. Our appreciation is also extended to the Corps Cadets Color Guard, whose participation adds to the dignity and tradition of these commencement exercises. We are also grateful for the valuable assistance of the faculty marshals and ushers who have volunteered to assist with today's ceremonies. On behalf of the faculty and staff of your proud alma mater, I wish you graduates every success. I hope you return often to campus in your new status as Virginia Tech alumni. Now, Ms. Allison L. Crandall, Vice President of the Class of 2017, will offer closing reflections, <laughs> after which our ceremony will be concluded and our academic session will come to a close. After her remarks, please stand and remain at your seats until the stage party has recessed from the field. Please be seated for the closing reflections. Thank you everyone for hanging out in the rain. Virginia Tech's campus is carved by intertwining paths, providing us with a variety of options that will lead us to any location on campus. Whether it is an established path or one you created when you were running late to class, each physical path paved across our campus is a metaphor representing an opportunity you took or didn't take while at this university. Virginia Tech has many developed tracks for us to follow, but gave us the freedom to pave our own. None of our paths are the same. They may have been crossed or paralleled, but each gave us a unique opportunity to grow and learn from. Our journey does not end here. As we set forth each on our unique, own unique paths, take comfort in knowing that although the path you stumble down may seem lonely, there are 4,830 other Hokies making the trek with you. We've all been here, running super late to class, having to sprint across the drill field with no time to spare. 
I want you to take a moment and reflect on what you might have missed when you were rushing to your destination. As you travel along the paths that you each choose, don't rush. Take your time. There is always an opportunity for you to take, a lesson to learn, and a chance for you to invent the future. Go forth from here confident in every direction you travel, because even if you get lost along the way, every journey you embrace will lead you where you are meant to be. And one last thing, any path you take, you will leave a trail of hokey tracks and always know that there is a road that will take you back home to Blacksburg. Remember, this is home. Thank you.